Hey guys, welcome back to the Rocket League Advent Calendar. We're on day three now, and as you know from watching day two, this is going to be a mechanics challenge. Push me and my friends to SSL level. Each day there's going to be about one and a half, two hours of tough mechanics challenges that need to be completed with the hopes of getting out of Grand Jam, getting into the SSL level. I do coaching. I have good game sense. At least I think so. I want to become Mechie. This is my challenge throughout the month of December to become Mechie. Once a week, there'll be challenges for me and Thrift to compete against each other and see who has improved the most. I welcome you guys to join my Discord down below in the description and follow along with the sheet and the progress is being made each day. Community members, any of y'all, are able to add their times to the records tab in the all times records thing. And if, as long as you send me proof with a time that you got with a video screenshot, whatever you think is proof of it. Let's jump into the sheet. All right, here's the sheet. Welcome to... Uh, we're on December 3rd now. Thrift's done day one. He's working on day two. He's a little bit behind. He'll catch up. I don't, I'm not sure what this times are looking like, but he'll catch up eventually, hopefully. Day three, we got self-set double task, wall and ground, complete pack, no bounce, this training pack, complete pack, controlling all the clears, this training pack, complete tr this pack, booming all the balls, this training pack. And then complete Dacia spring challenge on moderate difficulty. Guess the time slot's probably going to be an hour and a half for all this. These training packs are kind of difficult. Dacia, I haven't done it forever. Let's jump right into the action. All right. 15 minutes of double taps, ground setup, wall setup. I've done no warm up yet so far, so this is gonna be a fun little time to jump in. Wall setup, bang. And follow up the double. When approaching a wall setup, you're gonna want to get the really good height off the touch on the ball and be able to make yourself follow it. If you get height on the ball and you're able to get a good scoop under the ball, you'll be set yourself up for a backboard double. And then all you have to do is focus on the angle given. Just like this shot right here, you get a touch. And a flip also benefits, it gets space away from the ball and allows you to get a better angle on approach to score the ball. Just like that, a flip. Then we put all our focus into hitting the angle. Now we have ground setups. What we're going to do is we're going to get a high pop on the ball and then follow it up into a double. It helps if you get a slow touch to keep the ball close to you, allowing yourself to go for almost a ground to air dribble. If you get a lot of height, it allows you to get a lot of angle and be able to go higher and get a tighter angle to score around your opponents. It shows a high pop, gives a good angle. All right, that's the end of double tap time. 15 minutes is up. Let's go check it off on the list. Bang. All right, this pack is backward aerials. There's 30 shots in it. All we have to do is read the ball and double it. It's pretty simple. It's just reading the ball off the backboard, hitting a good angle with good power is the goal. If you don't get good power, there's no point in completing the shot because it won't go in at a higher level. If you're a lower level, you're going to want to just put the ball on target. It can bounce. Just get it in the net any cost possible. If you're a higher level, you want to be trying to place these in good spots with good power. Otherwise, the shots are not going to go in in a real game. This pack's very good because it shows all different angles. Gives you a lot of different reads on the backboard. A lot of the shots are fairly difficult to do. There's a change of using a double jump, single jump, flipping into the ball. There's lots of different variables that can happen in this pack. There's even shots that come from behind you and make it awkward. You're even able to self-double tap some of these off the backboard. So it's kind of like a triple tap, but it's a double tap. You're playing the ball off the back wall, and then you're doubling it. I made myself a rule where I can't bounce the ball in this pack just to make it a little more difficult on myself since it was only 30 shots. This is one of those shots that come from behind. You want to double it, just read it behind. It's like a double tap off a pass from behind you. It's kind of weird. It doesn't happen too often in the game, but it's a good thing to practice in case it does happen to you. This one was a weird shot. It was another one from behind. These are hard to read. It's good to get good power on these. You can't really air roll much to get much power. Otherwise, you're going to hit it way off target. You kind of want to just line yourself up ahead of time, use a little bit of air roll, and then stop and shoot the shot. If you just line yourself up, you're going to hit a lot more. If you air roll like that, it's going to go weak. If you want to get a touch, this is just a double tap. And then look, I set myself up and shoot. If you set yourself up well with your first touch, it's going to allow you to get good power and good placement on the shot. It gives you a lot more time to line up where you're going. Like here's a double tap. I set myself up and I'm able to place it in the top corner area. The rest of these shots, I'm pretty sure I just get good power, good shots, and call it the rest of this pack. Basically, the first touch matters. You want to set yourself up well for the end. If you don't get a first touch off the double, you're not going to be able to get a good setup for the rest of the follow through on the shot. What matters is getting a good follow through after the first touch is done. Hundred percent. Let's go check it off. Bang. All right. Welcome to the clears pack. Our goal here is to boom the ball as far as possible. So what we want to do is get boomer clears. If it's a backboard hit and if it goes hard against the backboard, we're going to want to clear it as far as possible. Hopefully sending it over the enemy's head into the other half. If the ball's rolling on the ground, we're going to want to clear it high and then make it so we can follow it to get a boom out of it. Or we're going to want to clear a one-time high and boom it away on the one-time clear. If the ball is rolling alongside the wall, we're either going to want to pinch it or we're going to hit it as far as possible out and as high as possible. 
The goal when booming the ball is to get it around and over your defender in any way possible. You're kind of throwing away possession, so it's not always the viable decision to do. It works well when your team is low boost and is needing to get boost. If you guys are trying to recover for some boost, you're going to want to clear the ball as far as possible. If not, it's not beneficial, and you're going to want to keep it close, which is the next pack we're doing is keeping the ball close. But here we demonstrate a lot of different ways to do it in this pack. This pack is actually a striker pack and not a defense pack. And that's so you can get clears like this and like, so it's not a goalie pack, so it doesn't end instantly. This gives you the opportunity to follow up touch and try and shoot it into the net that's blocked. This pack is great and gives many different options to people that are looking to learn how to clear the ball. Now we're controlling the clears. We're keeping the ball as close to us as possible, or at least getting a follow up touch. If we get a follow-up touch, we're able to outplay our opponent. This is done well if you have a good amount of boost. If your teammates are low on boost, it's often better to clear and boom the ball. If you're keeping it close, you want to be able to outplay the next opponent that's going to be challenging you. If you can't do that, there's no point in keeping the ball close. You kind of want to just outplay the guy nearest as first man. You're going to become first man if you clear the ball by following and challenging the ball. You're going to stay close to it, try to outplay one or two defenders. If you do that, you've done your job successfully. All you want to do really here is keep the ball close, get a good pop. This shot's a good example. You see how I dribble the ball and then I'm able to get a follow-up after. Even this one, I keep it in the corner by doubling it. I just want to keep the ball close and follow up close to the ball. That is the whole goal of keeping the ball close and clears. All right, that's the end of controlling the clears also. It's 0% because it's a striker pack, not a defense pack. And bang. Alright, and here's when things got interesting. I thought level 17 was rough. I thought level 18 was rough. Then we got to 19. 19? Oh man, this level. I was at 18 minutes when I got here. I don't know when I ended this level, but it was a long time. This level was absolute pain. I could not figure out how to do this first jump for the longest time. I eventually got a good run at it. This run was good. I thought I was going to complete the level, and then you find out what happens at the end. Uh, 
Uh, over here. Uh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, it doesn't go me, boost! No! No, 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 no. Now I was devastated that I hadn't completed the level. And then we get this run, where I somehow glitched the game and I ended up with a limited boost. Okay, we're cheating. I don't know how I have a limited boost. We're cheating. We are so cheating. I cannot stand this level. It gave me the map glitch, gave me 100 boost. Unfortunate. Gimme, gimme. Bang. Now, there's level 20. I spent a while on this level trying to figure out what to do at first. It took me a minute, and then I finally realized these rings at the end are the only hard part about this entire level. It took me a while to realize that I still had my flip on the end of these rings. Once I realized that, I completed the map in a record time of 51 minutes. Absolutely unbelievable that I spent 20 minutes on the last level after already spending 10 to 12 on the level before this. The last two levels were the only difficult part about this map, and if I went back and did it again, I would have no issues. Alright, here we go. Down through these rings. Flip to the platform. Slow down with that. Alright, 25 seconds, come on. Come on. Yes. 51539. All right. We have done it. We have done it. And bang. Done for December 3rd. All right, December 3rd was rough. Um, it was actually not too bad up until Dacia. I absolutely have. I don't know if I've ever completed that map. I've played it like two times ever. And I'm pretty sure I just played it for like 20 minutes. I don't know if I've completed it. If I have, it was a long time ago when the map came out. Uh, that was ridiculous. Link to the Discord in the description where you can keep track with all the Rocket League Advent Calendar stuff. The sheet's linked in the Discord. You can feel free to reach out to me through there. Have a good one. Take care. Goodbye.